I am Daniel Madison. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time with me. You could be doing better things, although I don't think so. Not today. This is an exciting video. I've been looking forward to making this one. This is a tutorial. A tutorial, a tutorial. This is me teaching one of my sleight of hand techniques. It's a color change, which basically means one playing card switches for another instantly, seemingly impossible. This color change is called glitch. This is what it looks like. If you don't know who I am, I am Daniel Madison. I am a creator, performer, and teacher of magic, sleight of hand, close of deceptions, specifically with playing cards, typically my very own playing cards. And I know I haven't done enough free tutorials on this channel, I promise you I will. Starting today, I'm gonna aim for at least one a week. This one is called Glitch. It has a backstory, it has a good, nice, to it and there's a reason why I chose to teach glitch today on this channel and I was inspired by a package that got delivered to me. Now I do deck reviews on my channel. I ask people to send me at least two decks of playing cards. One that I can review on my channel, the other one that I can give away to somebody watching these videos. Anyway, when the packages arrive at Electric Picture House, I go there, I pick them up, I put them aside. I don't like to open them straight away. I like to do that bit on film. I like to keep them as genuine as possible. One of those packages, however, was from a friend of mine called Brett Pendlebury. Is that how you say it? Pendlebury. Pendlebury. He's a cool guy, he's a cool magician, and he's just starting out on YouTube. I'll leave a link to him in this video description. I noticed his name on the envelope, so I couldn't leave this one aside. I watched a video on his YouTube channel talking about how he was sending these playing cards to somebody. Turns out that somebody was me, and inside that envelope, I believe I know what's inside that envelope. So although this isn't a deck review video, we are gonna open that on camera and I'm gonna show you what's inside and then it will make more sense why I decided to teach Glitch as a tutorial on my channel. This is the envelope, let's open it up right now. Brett, I do, I struggle with words, you know this about me, Brett Pen. I struggle with words, Brett Pendlebury. Maybe that's an accent thing, Brett Pendlebury. Um, you did mention in one of your videos that you send in some playing cards out to somebody, turns out that person was me. This isn't really, this could be a deck review, but I thought it'd be more interesting to turn whatever's inside this package into uh, the glitch tutorial, which is on its way in a few minutes. First, we need to open these because I'm going to actually teach glitch with the playing cards that are inside this envelope. Let's open it up right now. <laughs> So this is, yo Madison, thank you for these. I have had my fun with them. Now it's your turn. Hashtag use your cards. Man, Brett, you, you don't know how happy I am right now, honestly. So inside here, there's um, an original deck of, of Scarlet Rounders. Scarlet Rounders, wow. Open and used, whoa, they are certainly used. A deck of Madison players, which leads us nicely into this tutorial. Now these are the Madison players, these are the very reason that I wanted to make this video today. Uh, thank you so much Brett for sending these to me, we'll get to these in a second. I just wanna mention and talk a little bit about the Madison Rounders, the Scarlet Edition. I've not had any, any of these playing cards for quite a few years now. These were when I joined up with Illusionist, I think it was 2012, I wanna say 13, 12, 13. The first thing that I wanted to do when I joined up with Illusionist was make uh, my second deck of playing cards. The players were the first, the second were the Madison Rounders. These are the Scarlet Rounders, the red, very limited edition version. Uh, we did only make, I think, 2,000 of, of these red ones, and they were very hard to get a hold of. So the black deck was released as a standard, and alongside that, we released the red deck as a limited, kind of rare, 
deck, which is a strange thing in a subject all of its own to talk about. We actually decided to create rare decks rather than allowing playing cards to become rare on their own merit, which is a weird thing that uh, I'm sure I'll talk about that more in a, in a different video. But um, it's so nice to have a full deck of these back and I can tell man just how much you use these because these are um, these are a bit sticky man, I, I won't lie to you. It's great to have these man, it's been so long. I'm not actually going to use these ones, these are going to go straight into my uh, personal private collection which is very small right now. So it was actually the Madison players, these were my first ever deck of playing cards. I worked with Theory 11 for quite some time between the years 2007 to about 2012, worked on a whole bunch of projects and they really did give me my, my uh, platform, they, they showed me to the world, the magic industry and, and the people in the deceptive practices didn't really know who I was or what I was about until Theory 11, like they, sh JB picked me up and showed me to the world and it took off from there so I, I owe JB so much and, and uh, he knows it. So Theory 11 produced these, my first ever deck of playing cards. I saw David Blaine's playing cards, I saw that his face was the king of spades and all I ever wanted was the same thing, I wanted my face as the king of diamonds. I didn't want to be the king of hearts because I found that a little bit arrogant to put yourself as the king of hearts. Uh, the, the diamond means a lot to me, very symbolic, but also the, just the letter D, K, D, King of Diamonds, D, Daniel. And also, I don't know if you've noticed this, but in all my videos, I always favor the right. I always seem to manage to look just to the right because uh, this is my good side, this is my not so good side, and the King of Diamonds is looking that way too, so it kind of looked like me anyway. I got in touch with um, a, an incredible artist who I'm still good friends with, uh, Jeff Lianza. He and I worked together for a long time, building and creating not only the deck, but Jeff's responsible for, for the old Madisonist logo. Uh, he basically owns that logo, it's his. And without that logo, a lot of things wouldn't have happened. So he's another person I owe so much to. And really it was one of the first of its kinds. Nobody was doing uh, custom decks, especially especially branded like uh, uh, personally branded playing cards Dan and Dave had just done the smoke and mirrors uh, and I was working on this at the same time so nobody knew which way it was gonna go obviously David Blaine did too but nobody knew which way it was gonna go so it was a really interesting uh, experiment let's say so we got 11,000 of these decks made and they took four days to sell out back then that was unheard of it, it was an incredible experience and it, I think it was this deck along with my dangerous project that really kind of propelled me into the magic stratosphere what? into the magic world and the deceptive practices and because there were only 11,000 of these decks made I never really got any I got like a handful and when I discovered that uh, Brett was going to be sending me these it, it started making me think I started reminiscing about the, the good times I had with Theory 11 and one of the things I put out with them was Glitch and I, I don't think I was ready to release it at the time, it wasn't practiced enough, it wasn't developed enough, I've certainly, certainly played with it a lot since it was first created so I wanted to refresh the lesson and give it to you guys free here on my YouTube channel and what better way to do that than with the actual Madison players. Let's get to the good stuff, I am Daniel Madison, this is Glitch. So what you're gonna do is start by finding two playing cards that you like and putting them to the bottom of the deck. In my case, I'm gonna use the King of Diamonds and the Ace of Spades. They go right on the bottom of the deck. You're gonna hold the deck from above like this, a very standard kind of typical grip. There's not too much going on aside from this one adjustment. Finger three needs to be over by the corner, by the index, the outer index of the actual deck. Uh, this is quite important, you'll see why in a second. Otherwise, the deck is held in a fairly standard grip. Not too much going on, not just yet. This other hand is gonna be holding the deck too, so you're holding it very normally in a very standard kind of way. Nothing strange, nothing seemingly strange, not just yet anyway. Finger one is gonna add a little bit of pressure so that you can bow, so that you can bevel, so that you can bend the entire deck. This allows you to riffle off 
two playing cards with your thumb, finger one of your free hand is going to be touching the face of the bottom card and the deck is just gripped around in a very standard grip. So when you bend the deck, you, you can riffle two playing cards with your thumb, one, two, and just hold a break between those two cards. So that's my setup. Um, not that this needs a setup because it's a, a very simple color change, but still. So from here, one, two, hold a break. Uh, it's very, it doesn't matter if it's a big, small, tiny break, it doesn't really make, uh, make a difference. That's the only preparation that you're gonna need. Here is what happens, I'm just gonna do the, the mechanics of this in slow motion. So the thumb makes contact with the bottom two cards and the grip on these two cards is now entirely between finger three of the deck hand and the thumb of the free hand. Once you've got that grip and it feels comfortable, finger one is gonna grip these two cards on the side here and they're gonna begin the rotation. So the king of diamonds is now gonna rotate once see how finger one goes all the way around the back and presses the card so it spins over finger two is already working its way around the other side of these two cards to do the same thing to continue the rotation into the clip so doing that again slowly starts with the grip finger one goes round pushes around the back finger two makes its way to the front and now i can clip those cards on the back of finger two with fingers one and three of the deck hand. Sounds very complicated and it might look a little bit complicated to begin with, but I assure you it's not once you start practicing this. So the grip is here, one spin, two spin. Notice the position of the deck hand. Fingers one and three are pointed away from the deck, ready to receive the two cards into position right here. So I'll do that again at full speed and we are good to go. We're good to make the actual color change at this point. So I'll do that again. Grip is here. Finger one pushes, finger two helps. Clip the cards in place and we are ready to go. So once those two playing cards have spun all the way around and I've made, I found that position clipped between fingers one, two, and three, look at the exact position that I'm in. This is the ideal position for the actual change itself. Finger three plays the most important part in this change, and it's completely covering the index. That is the right position. Feeling where it is, knowing that it's over that index, I know that I'm good to go for the color change. Uh, finger one holds everything in place on the back of finger two. More importantly, finger one is gonna be left behind to clip the ace of spades in position against the deck. So the ace of spades isn't actually going to appear to have moved position as the king makes its way behind the deck. So we'll do that in slow motion to show you exactly what happens once you're clipped here. All that's left to do at this point, fingers one and two, really they do stay in place, they stay still. Uh, finger three is going to drag the top card away from the ace, like so. Finger one hold the, holds the ace in place like this. And as the king clears the ace spades, it slides all the way down here. Uh, and it's kind of left sticking out at a weird angle. Now this is for the basic change, which looks like this. So the basic change leaves the card kind of hanging out, kind of sticking out. You don't really need to clean up just yet. Uh, the cleanup, we'll look at cleanups in a second, um, but we'll go, Right now we'll go over the uh, move itself, the whole move from start to finish. So grip here, spin, clip in position, finger three drags the king away from the ace, underneath to the back here, out of sight. And you'll notice, just like the snap change, for anybody who knows the snap change, the ace of spades kind of hides uh, this out of the way. It is a little bit sight angle sensitive. We're gonna cover how to hide that in a minute because you can do this at 360 degrees. Once again, spin over the back. And the king is pulled by finger three. Do that slowly from the front so you can see what's going on here, here, and we're left with the ace. Let's take a look at how you clean that mess up. Now clean up is something that I've never really worried about with this, especially when you do this for camera because you're left in a position where maybe you can do an edit and trick where you drop the card and you can show the deck. 
Uh, otherwise, the cleanup itself is quite uh, intuitive. You'll know what to do when you practice it, when you practice this. So, spin, the card changes here. Now you're in this position. I can now hand everything over to my free hand. Um, finger three is going to force that ace to go, or that king to go underneath the deck as it goes here. And I'm left with the ace in this hand. So if we did that um, at speed, this is what that looks like. So the king, that was terrible, but bear with me. The, uh, the card is now sticking out here. I'm going to hand these over to this hand and then come away here. This is the subject of deception. This is what people are going to be looking at, not necessarily the deck. Once again, at a completely exposed angle, the change card is here. This goes into my hand as we show the changed card. Now, it is entirely possible to have that cleanup happen more or less instantly, but for me, the, the hand looks so natural that I avoid doing it. There's never really a reason to clean up with one hand there and then. Nonetheless, when you practice it, you'll figure, you'll figure out that it's possible. I advise against it because uh, the hand just looks so strange. I'll show you exactly what I mean. So the change happens. We're left here. Now the deck can slowly be moved down on top of that bottom card and the bottom card can be lined up underneath the deck all in one hand. Then you can take the card away and hold like this. I advise against that just because it looks weird. This hand looks strange. Uh, nonetheless, I thought I would mention that to you. One of the most important things or useful things or should I say, one of the things I enjoy most about this change is once you've done the change, this change itself is actually designed to do a cleanup on a surface, on a table. But when we were teaching it, I remember it being said that it was so, so much more practical and visually appealing to just show the change. And that's the end of the story. This for me is one of the most important parts. So this cleanup is you do the change, you put everything down, and then your hands are empty. This is what it looks like. So that's basically the, the cleanup that I use um, when I'm doing this near a table or near a surface. I really like the idea of having, having an instant cleanup and, and putting things down as soon as you have shown your deception. Now, there's no... There's no real reason why you have to do this. I just like the idea of once that change has happened, everything is put down. Now, you don't have to spread the deck. Uh, you don't have to run away from the deception, but, but here's, here's in detail what I love about this and why I think it's the version you should do if you're gonna do this uh, color change. So the mechanics of it, everything happens now. And if you notice I'm tilting everything down kind of towards the table. The card that's going to change is close to the table. Now I do the change here and as soon as I get to this position I can basically just put everything down so I can drop this card, the changed card, and then I can put the deck down on top and the ace on top of this and then spread the deck. The ace, the ace comes along for the journey, for the ride. And now the ace, the changed card is over here out of the way whilst the card that's uh, the king of diamonds is actually on this side underneath the deck. Not that that's a big deal or, or makes too much of a difference. I do think the visuals of a performing glitch on a table do go a lot further than just, just doing this in the hand. So like this and then spray. Maybe I'm running without even being chased. I just think there's something really nice about being able to put everything down as soon as the change has happened. It's no big deal, but for those people who kind of want to run away from it and want to take everything a step further without doing this um, on a table, if you were to do it just here, you could actually cop the king of diamonds away so that it's not even anywhere near the deck, I, I don't think that's necessary whatsoever. This is just a fun little color change. So in a very brief explanation, the change happens here. Everything goes down. The change card is here. I can put the ace down on top of the spread and then just spread everything. And the ace is now away from the king, which is right here. So Brett Pendlebury, thanks for sending me these playing cards. I have been looking out for some of these and, and I'm so glad I managed to get a hold of them. Along with the Scarlet Rounders, these are now going into my personal collection. And thanks for inspiring me to make this video to teach something that I have taught over at theory11.com. 
You can still pick up Glitch, you can see the old me performing and teaching Glitch along with Danny Garcia and Dan White, I think. I went over to Vegas to film that. There's another story I want to tell in a different video from that same time. I'll save it for a different time. If you're having any troubles with Glitch, with learning, with practice, with performance, I'm right here. I'm trying to spend as much time as I can at YouTube. So any comments that are left in these videos, I will be paying attention and I will try to respond to every single person. I will try and make my tutorials a weekly thing. I will try, can't make promises. Saying that I'm going away this Monday for five days, so I might not be able to post too much and I can't tell you where I'm going. I am taking my cameras with me though. If you perform glitch or any of my techniques for that matter on the social networks, make sure you tag me. I'd love to check it out and see what you're up to. Thanks for being here. I am Daniel Madison. I will see you next.